Okay, we're now going to learn how to do the solid granny square. This is a little bit uh, different from the usual, very lacy, traditional granny squares, something more like this that you would see in blankets and um, things your grandma used to do, hence the word granny square. I like this version because it's a little bit more contemporary and it makes a much more block of colour. If you do a bunch of them, they look great as a, a very modern throw or do less of them and you can make a really nice cushion cover. Um, unlike when we started to crochet, we were working backwards and forwards from the bottom. We're now starting to crochet from the middle in a circle, starting from the middle and then going round and round and round. So as you can see, if you start from a circle in this one, you start with three double crochets, or in the UK they call these treble, which is confusing, but I'm using the US um, wording because I'm used to that. Three double crochets on one side, then three on the next, three on the next and three on the next. On the next row you build up by four more double crochets which comprises of two in each corner. So on the next row you've got three, four, five, six, seven double crochets all the way around. On the next row you would then have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven all the way around and then increasing to fifteen if you want to make a much larger square. It's important that you keep counting your stitches because if you don't, your square is going to be wonky. Um, but it also helps to see where you are. Now there's lots of videos on YouTube about how to make a solid granny square. The reason I don't like those is because where you start off, you always start not with an, a double crochet, but with actually a chain stitch. And anyone who's a little bit more um, familiar with crochet will know this. And the problem is, the videos I'm seeing, the change stitch is going up through the middle of the square and it's really noticeable and I think it spoils the look of the square. The way I do it is so that the chain is always in the corner so it kind of disappears and you don't see it. It's... Anyway, you'll see as we go along. Right, so start with making a circle. There's the end of my wool. So to make a circle, we start with a chain. So make a slip knot. And chain four. So there's your first chain. Second chain. Third chain. Fourth chain. Have you got used to counting chains? There's your first one two, three, four. To make that into a circle, we want to join them together. We join them together with what's known as a slip stitch. So you put your hook into that very first chain, you grab your yarn, pull it through, and pull it through again, and then you have to find where the circle is. It's right in there. There's your circle. Now you want to, as I said before, you want to make the first three double crochets inside that circle. But we start with a chain, a chain of three. You can't just start double crocheting because you won't get that built up side, you must just start with a chain three. So your first double crochet is not a double crochet, it's a chain. One, two, three. There's a chain of three. Then you can do your first double crochet. Wrap the wool around, pull it through the hole, pull through your yarn, the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. Now a third one, wrap the wool around, pull through, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. So you've got your first bit of square with three 
double crochets on it, but the knot, the first one is a chain, remember? Now this straggly bit of wool, I try to lay it across the top of the work and just work over the top of it and it can eventually disappear and so you can just cut it off. If that's too much for you to bother with right now, just put it, tuck it out of the way and you can soon weave it in at the end, so just ignore it. Right, that's the first side of our square. We now need to make a corner. To make a corner, you chain two. One, two. That's how you get these little gaps in the corner, okay? Chain two, and then we're going back into our first double crochet. Now we don't have to worry about chaining anymore, you only chain at the beginning. So wrap the wool around, push it through the hole, pull it through, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. And again, wrap the wool around, push it through the hole, pull through the wool, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. The third one, wrap the wool around, push it through the hole, pull through, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. So now you've got the bottom and a side of a square. We need to do another corner, so you chain two. One, two. Now we're on the next third side of the square, a double crochet. Wrap the wool around, pull through the hole, pull it through, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. And again, wrap the wool around, push it through the hole, pull it through, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. Again, wrap the wool around, push it through the hole, grab the yarn, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. Three sides of your square. Right, so we need to do a corner. One, two. Right, last side of the square. Wrap the wool around, put it through the hole, pull through. Wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. Wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. Wrap the wool around, pull through, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. Now we need to join up the corner, but rather than chain two this time, it's a little bit different because we're joining. You just chain one, but your next chain is a slip stitch to join it to this third chain. Do you remember the first, this is the chain we started with at the beginning, which counts as a stitch. So what you're wanting to do now is go through this chain here. Now, I a lot of people just go through it like that, through the middle but you're only getting one piece of yarn and that makes it really kind of loose and baggy and you end up with a big hole there. So I don't even remember when we started crocheting, I talked about these bumps on the back of a chain. One, two, three bumps. I like to, when I'm joining it to a chain, is put it through the middle, but also, if you can see on the back, through the back of that bump, like that. So you end up with two bits, and it's a lot tougher, it doesn't pull away. So now we do the slip stitch by pulling the yarn through there and pulling through again. So you've got four sides of a square and four corners. Now then, because it's at the beginning of the next round, we have to make the first stitch, isn't a double crochet, it's a chain. One, two, three, there's your three chain. We need to do two in every corner so we can increase each row by four so you've done one in the corner, now you have to kind of work back on yourself. It's the only way to do it so we can hide this chain. So I tend to do a double crochet going back into this corner. There's my first double crochet. So there you've got two stitches. Now you can start working across the top. 
And when we work across the top, we actually work in to the chains at the top, not into the spaces underneath. We work into the chains. Now, because of what you've done here, what you're actually working into is a bit messy. This chain's easy. It looks like an ordinary chain. This chain's a bit broken up and it looks like it should be fastened there. So we have to be careful when we're putting it in there. And then this chain is totally weird. It's just a little hole, but that's just the beginning of the next round. You'll get used to that. So our next stitch, we've done two in the corner, is a double crochet, wrap the wool around, push it into that funny little hole, pull the wool through, wrap the wool around, wrap the wool around. There's your third stitch. Now this time we're working into this funny broken up chain here. Let me just wrap the wool around. So you've got to push it through both parts of that chain. There and there. Have I got that through all right? Have I gone through too many? Sorry, I'll do that again. It's just a bit tight because of the type of there. Grab your yarn, pull it through, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. Now the next stitch is easy because it's a proper chain and the rest will be easy as well. Put it through two loops of the chain, pull through, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two. Now keep a count. You've got the funny chain at the beginning counts as one, two, three, four, five. There needs to be seven on the top. And you need to make sure you've got two in either corner. So you must be now at a corner because at the corners, we work into the hole. We don't work into the chain. So that's how you keep a count. If you, as long as you know you've got two left to do, you know you're in a corner. So wrap the wool around, put it through. Wrap all around, pull through two, wrap all around, pull through two. That's one, and you need to do another one, two. Wrap all around, pull through two, wrap all around, pull through two. So let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's great. That's the first row of the, of the square, or well, the second row of the square, sorry. We're at another corner now, so we have to create another corner, which is chain two. Now we're working along the other side of the square. So if we're working on this side of the square and we need seven stitches, we need two more in the corner. So it's two double crochets in the corner, chain two and two more. Wrap all around, pull through two, wrap all around, pull through two, wrap all around, pull through two, wrap all around, oops, wrap all around, pull through two. Now then, actually, I'll just redo that last one because it was a bit messy. Wrap all around, pull through two, wrap all around, pull through two, pull through two. Okay, so you've got two in this corner. Now we're going to work in the chains on the top and they all look pretty clear. What you've got to be careful of, if it's sort of bunching up like this, you're going to miss that chain, the first chain, and go in here. You don't want to do that, so just keep them to one side. Obviously that's part of the corner, so you don't go in there. You go in the one that's directly above the first, they call it the post of the stitch. Now when I say it's directly above, it's, it's always very slightly to the right. Not all the way over in that one, but just there. So that's the first stitch you're working into. You've done two in the corner, the wool around, push it through that stitch, both loops on the stitch, pull your wool through, wrap the wool around, pull through two, wrap the wool around. Then the, the next one is easy, push that through, pull through two, wrap the wool around, pull through two, and the last one's easy. What gets confusing with the granny square is trying to work out whether you're back in a corner or not. You, know, you might think, oh right, I've got to go through that stitch there. But actually, no, 
you're back in a corner. What you've also got to be careful of is if you're, if you're pulling things over as you're working, it looks like you've got one there to go into. Make sure you know that a stitch has been done because the, you can see that there's a stitch on top of that V. So we've got five on here, one, two, three, four, five. We need seven, so we must be at a corner because we need to do two in a corner. So there's one corner stitch. There's another corner stitch. You need to chain two at a corner. Then working across the other side, again, you'll chain two. And another one, sorry, two double crochets in the corner. Just make sure you can see where the next stitch is going, which is directly above this post. So you're working across these three stitches at the bottom. One, two, three. Now you're back in a corner. You know you're back in a corner because you've got one, two, three, four, five, and you need seven. So into the corner. two in the corner, chain two, two more because we're starting on the other, the last side of the square, one double crochet, two double crochets, again make sure you don't go into that one because you've got to pull that over and see where the chain is above that first post and you're working across the top of all three. So that's the first one. There's your second one. Third one. So you've got five, one, two, three, four, five. You must be in a corner now to do two more to make seven. You want to finish off that corner. So you chain one, you don't chain two, you chain one. And you want to do a slip stitch into that third chain and you can see the chains there. There's one, two, three. You want to go through the top of the chain but also to the back of that bump. So in the top and then through to the back of the bump so you've got two on the hook like that. So let's go through them and then through. Then you pull the yarn through pull the yarn through and again you need to chain two to get the height, sorry chain three to get the height to go round the rest of the square. So can you remember the first stitch we work into is a funny little hole, the second stitch is a V that's been opened up so you've got to close that up and work right through that V and then we're working in all the other, all the other stitches. Oh, hang on, so no, what, I made a mistake there. We've got to do two in the corner. There's your first one, which is the chain. Go back into that corner and do your third. Now the next one is into the funny little hole there. Your next one is into the collapsed chain, but make sure you go through the back and the front of that chain like that. And then you work across the top of all the other chains. You 
double crochets. Now then, if we had seven on the last row, that means we need to have 11 on this row each time we, we increase by two. So let me just do a double count. One, chain counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need two more, so therefore we must be in a corner. I'm saying, I'm repeating this because I don't want you to end up going into a chain when you don't need to, um, because it'll just make the square go out of shape. Two in the corner, two in the corner, chain two, and then you're working along the other side. So again, two in the corner, two in the corner, now be careful that you haven't hidden the first chain that you're going to work into. Again, this is because you won't get the right amount of double crochets. So pull your work over and you can see there's the first post. So that must be the chain above it to work into. Wrap the wool around. Pull through two. And now it's easy to work through all the stitches. Okay, so I'm going to work to the very end. I'm going to do two in the corner, chain two, two in the corner, and I'll see you right back at the beginning again. Okay, so I'll just finish off that last row so you get to see a corner again. Uh, so I'm, I know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need to do 11. So I'm back in the corner doing two, one, two, I'm chaining two, doing two more in the corner, one, two, making sure I find that first stitch okay to work into, which is that one, work all the way across the top. every single stitch whoops that's also something that can be done you cannot go through two always make sure you go through both loops of that stitch Working to the end. I've counted that there's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two more in the corner. I'm chaining one, doing the slip stitch into the third chain. The first bit of the chain gets hidden down there. One, two, three. So I'm going through that and the bump at the back. And pulling through two. Oops. Now, if you want, to, that's a small square. That's a small granny square. If you want to make it bigger, again, you would just follow the exact same steps that I did for that round by chaining three, and this time you'd have 15 going across the top in exactly the same way. But I'm gonna finish this off here, just so you can see how I finish off a square. All I do is cut the wool, pull it through. Don't pull it too tight, because you'll make the square go a funny shape. 
then you can't just cut it there because it, it could easily unravel. So we now need to get a darning needle. Now you've been working, this is the front of the square that you've been working on. This is something else you've got to get used to is what's the front and the back of your work. I mean, it's pretty obvious because you've got this tail, but if that tail had been hidden and you put your square down and picked it up again, this is what you call the nice side where all the stitches are smooth. And also the, the sort of the chain at the top, which is like a plait, is sort of tilted towards you. So you know that's the front of your square. The back of your square is all a lot more bumpy and you don't see that nice plait. It's over at the other side or that nice chain at the top. So you know that's the back of your work. That's the front where it's all nice and smooth, chain showing. There's the back. So on the back, you just want to kind of weave through, picking up stitches and finding places that you can just weave through that end. Pull it through. Don't pull too tight again because you'll ruin your corner. And then I kind of weave it back on itself, but not straight through the same loop, otherwise it'll unravel, but over the top and through the actual middle of the yarn. And then when you pull that through, Again, don't put it too tight. But now you can just cut it. Whoops. Get my scissors. Very, very close. And it actually won't unravel. You won't see it either. And this bit at the bottom, I kind of worked it round and round, so I could just cut this. But if you hadn't, been working it round and round. It's a good idea again to just kind of work it round a bit more through the centre like this. Up through there, pull it. Cut it very close. So there you have your granny square. Now the other thing about when you when you when you do squares or any anything in crochet, you're supposed to what they call block them, which is sort of either spritz it with a bit of water, pin it out onto uh, I don't know a firm cushion or something, so that you get really nice flat squares and they're not all wrinkly and bunched up. So. Those are my granny squares. I've got a small one there, but those ones are bigger. Super. Okay, thank you.